Hello, my name is Nabil Dabra. I'm a faculty in the Department of Leukemia at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, today, it's a pleasure to speak to you and give an update on the EHA 2022 presentation that I had the pleasure of delivering, uh, which looked at the combination of megrolumab with azacitidine in PP53 mutated AML and MDS. This was a phase 1B phase 2 study that had two arms. One of these arms looked at the combination of azacitidine, a hypomethylating agent, with megrolumab CD47 antibody in frontline higher risk MDS, which included patients with IPSS, intermediate high, very high risk. The second parallel arm of this study looked at frontline older unfit for intensive chemo AML patients. Uh, the uh, drug that was evaluated here was a novel immunotherapy called uh, megrolumab, which targets the CD47 SERP alpha interaction. This interaction is very important uh, and results in shutting down or reducing the activity of macrophages. So by blocking the CD47 SERP alpha interaction between the tumor cell and the macrophages, we reduce or remove that inhibitory signal to the macrophage, resulting in unleashing and activating the macrophages, which can then proceed to do the anti-tumor or anti-leukemia activity. Uh, megrolumab is the first among a group of rapidly growing CD47 serp alpha antibodies. There are now about seven or eight in clinic, including naked antibodies, as well as bispecific antibodies and potential CAR constructs to this target. Um, and uh, interestingly, the combination with azacitidine was based on preclinical data where we saw that combining azacitidine with megrolumab resulted in increase of the prophagocytic signals like calreticulin and others, and this further enhanced the activity of macrophages, resulting in a synergy. Uh, so the study um, enrolled a total of about 95 or 96 frontline MDS patients. Uh, as I mentioned, these were all higher risk by IPSSR, and even more so because of the emerging data and clinical signal of activity of megrolumab in PP53 and adverse risk cytogenetics, we saw that about 26 to 30% of these patients had a TP53 mutation. Uh, this is a slight enrichment because historically in MDS frontline higher risk, we see about 15 to 18% have a TP53 mutation. I think there was some selection for megrolumab uh, given its emerging activity in TP53 mutated AML. Overall, the, uh, the regimen was well tolerated in MDS. We uh, saw a early mortality, 60-day mortality of only 2%, which is quite acceptable and uh, very uh, good in the frontline higher risk MDS situation. We do see anemia. This is a known effect on target from CD47 antibodies, and in fact did lead to a partial clinical hold by the FDA on megrolumab earlier this year. The hold has since been removed, and additional monitoring parameters, especially after the first and the second dose of megrolumab on day one and four have been introduced, because that really is the time when we see the significant hemoglobin drops and anemia. Usually after the sixth and seventh dose day, of treatment, we don't see much anemia. And at the end of the cycle, most people, especially those who are responding, actually start having improvement in their hemoglobin. So with those parameters implemented, I expect that the anemia should not be a major issue, uh, but it is something that does require a bit of understanding and a learning curve. Efficacy-wise, the combination was uh, very encouraging. The overall response rate was 75%, uh, and the true CR rate, which is one of the gold standard endpoints that uh, both investigators and the FDA look at, was about 33 to 35%. Uh, we looked at the patient's TP53 wild type and TP53 mutated separately. Uh, interestingly, the CR rate is uh, similar, about 40% in the TP53 mutated and about 32% in the TP53 wild type. Uh, and the survival, which I think is the most encouraging aspect of this study, granted it is a single arm study, uh, was uh, a total of um, not reach survival at a median follow of about 18 months. And interestingly, in the TP53 mutated, the median survival in those 25 patients frontline MDS was 16 and a half months. And this is really the best survival we have seen in a single arm or randomized study for frontline higher risk TP53 mutated MDS. Uh, so again, this has now led to a uh, ongoing and actually nearly completed enrollment randomized phase three study of azacitidine megrolumab versus azacitidine placebo in frontline higher risk MDS. 
The study has a co-primary endpoint of true CR by the IWG MDS criteria, uh, as well as a overall survival. And we're hoping in the next six to 12 months to start seeing some of this data and hopefully a positive, of course, could lead to a potential approval of a ACID and map doublet for MDS, which would be very important, a breakthrough and step forward in MDS. Now, in parallel, the study also had an AML arm. The AML arm focused on TP53. This was not based on preclinical rationale, but based on emerging clinical data where we saw encouraging response, especially CR rate, as well as good tolerability in TP53 mutated AML. So the data we presented at the EHA meeting in 2022 looked at azacidine plus megrolumab in frontline TP53 mutated AML, which are the worst of the worst, very difficult population. What we saw was that the overall response rate, CR, CRI rate was about 45%, true CR rate of about 35%. This is quite encouraging, uh, actually, and better than what has been seen with azacidine venetoclax, where the true CR rates are about 20 to 25%. More importantly, the median survival with the azacidine megrolumab in this frontline TP53 mutated uh, unfit AML population was about 11 months, uh, which does not sound like a lot, but when you compare it to all the published data with azacidine venetoclax, the cytobine venetoclax, azacidine alone or intensive chemo, the median survival in this very difficult frontline TP53 mutated AML has historically been between six to seven months. So the 11 months, although in and of itself is not great, it's still a step forward. And hopefully this will be confirmed in another randomized ongoing study of azacidine megrolumab versus azacidine venetoclax or intensive chemo. This is the enhanced two study. And then of course, if positive, could be the first drug approved for this very difficult uh, mutational group of TP53 mutated AML. So a lot of progress happening and, and especially for these really difficult populations of severe unmet need for the last two, three decades, both TP53 mutated AML and frontline high-risk MDS. We're hoping that the CD47 antibody field in general and megrolumab being the first in human in this group will offer some promise and step forward as we continue to move forward to uh, treating and improving outcomes in MDS and AML. Thank you very much for listening.